In this reusable learning object, we look at social network analysis and provide an introduction as to why we can use social network analysis in event management research and how we can use it in event management research. So why do we use social network analysis? For us, particularly when you're looking at masses of data that come from social media, such as Twitter and Facebook, it allows us to segment that data based on user behavior. Specifically for Twitter, it allows us to understand the natural groups formed around interconnections that discuss specific topics or look at particular personal characteristics such as location or interests. And social network analysis also allows us to identify who are the important people in these groups that are formed around topics or personal characteristics. In the old days, uh, we used traditional data collection methods to collect information on social networks. Surveys were quite popular, uh, interviews as well, and then, then the interviews were analyzed to explicitly look for connections or observations. So for example, looking at the photo at your, at your left, a researcher could observe the the um, interactions around that networking event for about an hour and then identify who's been talking to who and create a social network from that. We then took the data that we got from surveys, interviews, observations, and we did a computational analysis of a matrix. If you've, if you've done a level mathematics, you'll have an idea of what a matrix is, basically rows and columns of data. And from that, we have, an, we have some understanding of the social network. And the fundamental building block of social network analysis and social networks are relationships. So A is connected to B in some way. It's tied to B in some way. Forgive the pun. And those ties can take two forms. That tie can be directed where A has a directed relationship to B. So in a Twitter reply, for example, if you're replying to X, there's a from you and there's a to X or B. There's another type of relationship you can have that's undirected. So family relationships, brother, sister, parent, child are undirected. There's no direct from or to that can be identified. In the social media world, Facebook um, friendships are undirected because once your friend, that's a mutual relationship. It's, it doesn't, it's, um, it's not reciprocated. It's, it's, a, it's a mutual relationship. So now let's get into some more details on social network analysis. A formal definition is that it is a research technique that analyzes social structures that emerges from combination of relationships. So if you look at the image on the left, you'll see an overview with some names borrowed from the School of Tourism and the connections that may exist among them. And what we do in social network analysis is mathematically analyze the some total of these relationships. So we have two elements that we look at. We look at nodes and that's the entity and in this case we're looking at actors or individuals on which relationship acts and the edge which are the connections or the relationships that connect these nodes and it can be directional if we have a directed graph it can be undirected if we have a undirected graph. And we start looking at characteristics of these overall social networks. So we look for clusters or subgroups, and these clusters can form their own topics. They can form their own personal characteristics when we're looking at Twitter. And in this case, we've got a cohesive subgroup from A, B, D, and E, where all of these members are highly interconnected, and they share a strong number of connections as compared to, let's say, for example, C, D, and E that are less highly connected. And after we look at these clusters, subgroups, cliques, we can look at individual nodes and certain measures that apply to them. So centrality, we look at the number of connections that an individual may have with the group. 
we tend to look at incoming um, collection that's more important for us uh, cohesion shows the, the strength of collections between the group and it's the ease by which you can go from one part of the network to the other density looks at the robustness in other words how strong the network is um, if you if you can remove a connection within the network and would the network still function if you've removed that connection so for example a, B, D, and E are quite a dense subgroup because if you remove any of those connections you can still get to, from one part of the network to the other. However, C, D, E aren't as well connected because if you remove that connection from C to D there is no other way for C to be connected to the network. And then finally, betweenness is another measure of the importance of a, of a node within the network and it looks at the shortest pair that each node pair is on. And the rules of the node that may have within the overall network, if they've got several, we just look at, at three here. A node that is peripheral has a below average centrality, so it's less important in the network. So C, for example, is an example of a peripheral node because it's not connected to many things, so it's less important. A uh, central connector, such as D, has an above average centrality. It's connected to many people and it's 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 a uh, core part of of the network and e a connector between groups because it has above average betweenness so if you wanted to get from one part of the network to the other if you wanted to get from for example a to h so you go from one cohesive subgroup a b d and e to another f h i and g you'll have to pass through e so E is a broker in that case. It has, it's got above average between this. So that was just a brief overview to social network analysis. It gave us a general introduction as to what are the building blocks of social network analysis, some ideas as to why we use it, and here are some references that can get you started in your journey in understanding social network analysis.